You're listening to the Odessa Christian Faith Center podcast, where we dig deeper into God's Word and how it will transform our lives. Now here's your host, Mark Blair. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Odessa Christian Faith Center podcast. Thank you so much for being with us today. Over the last two weeks, you've heard episodes with Pastor Don K. Wood and Pastor David Brown of Victory Church in Amarillo talking about faith, what faith is, how do we apply it to our lives. So today I have the privilege of sitting down with Pastor Paulette K. Wood, and she's going to go more in depth about what it means to live by faith. Pastor Paulette, thank you so much for being with us today. Let's start off with our first question. What is faith? The first thing that comes to my mind always is faith is believing and speaking. But to put a different twist on it, I think it's believing, speaking, and acting. Because when you believe something, not only will you say it, you'll do it. Mm -hmm. It requires a a great deal of action on your part. So like it talks about in James, that faith without works is dead. dead. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Could you elaborate a little bit more on that verse for us? Is that all right? Sure. Um, if you be, let's say if you believe in tithing, you believe in giving, you believe in a return on tithing and giving, what's the natural thing you would do? You'd give. Mm-hmm. You'd tithe. And then you set your faith for that to come back unto you. Most people, you might say, do you believe in giving into the kingdom of God? Yes, I do. Great. Do you believe in tithing? Oh, sure. But if you were to actually track, do they? A lot of people don't. It's just a hit and a miss. So I think if you really believe it, not only do you say that you do, but you are a doer of that word. Not just a hear, not just a mental assent to it, but you truly do act it out and act on that word. So how would that apply to something like healing? For Faith healing? for healing, yes, ma'am. Oh, I've, you've heard stories before of people who would say... Um, Oh, I want you to pray for me right now, and and could you hurry up because for healing? Because I know the Bible says lay hands on the sick and they will recover. But do you think you could hurry up because I told the hospital I'd be there at five to check in? Well, there's nothing wrong with going to a hospital to do anything. There's nothing wrong with seeing doctors. But what you what were we praying for? Were are, are we being double minded in in that we're believing God for healing? But you said, but, but well, let's, can we get past that so I can go do the natural things? Mm-hmm. Might be an example of that. Okay. So how would you define living by faith? Living by faith. Living by mm-hmm. faith. Uh, taking God at his word. When we, uh, I think when we first went into the ministry, even right before we actually uh realized, I think, that we were called into the ministry. We made a decision. We had been born again, and later we were filled with the Holy Spirit. And the Word of God became such a reality to our lives that we made a decision that the standard we would live by would be God's Word. That takes faith, because the Word of God runs contrary or contradicts the culture. So to say you're going to live by the Word of God means you're going to live by faith because the rest of the world doesn't live that way. So what if you see things in the Bible, they become truth to you, we call that ramus to you, revelation knowledge to you, then you purpose, not only do I believe it in my mind and believe it in my heart, but I'm going to act it out. And, and for us... Uh, it was the bottom line. It was the standard. Everything would measure up to, well, what does the Word say? Faced with the situation in life, what does the Word say? That takes faith. It takes faith to be able to do that. Um, and our faith would continue to develop and continue to grow as we learn to live by that faith. Uh, we were, when we realized we were called into the ministry and, and, uh, wanted to uh, go to Bible school, and but we never got a, uh, an affirmation to do that. And all of a sudden, uh, I was teaching school. Don stayed home. He was studying for the ministry. Uh, we had a family that was, was in a pretty bad situation that had come to stay with us for the weekend, ended up being almost a year they were living with us. 
it took faith to continue on our path of preparing for the ministry because Don couldn't prepare and work, and uh, he did some things that he could do uh, to help out, but basically his job was to study and prepare for the ministry. And that took faith on our part. But it was some of the, some of the uh, most exciting and rewarding times of our life because uh, we could see the word in action. Mm-hmm. And I think when we came in uh, to the word of God, and that, that would be our standard. Uh, in some cases, we really didn't have a choice. You better believe God because there are just some things we couldn't afford to do and not and to do because our income had been cut more than half. And uh, we, we just learned that we would stand on the word of God. If we got the sniffles or a cold, we believed God for that. We, we didn't go to the doctor. We didn't have insurance. Uh, we believed God. Mm-hmm. And he, he came through every time for us. I, I can't think of a time that he didn't. Standing on his word, he was faithful and true to his word. The word works. The Bible says that the word of God doesn't come back empty or void, but it accomplishes and prospers where we send it. So we'd speak the word um, over kitchen cabinets and refrigerators. Mm-hmm. Uh, when Don would study, he, he would get up in the morning about 8 o'clock and go to our kitchen table. That was his desk, and he would study from 8 to 5, and he'd take about a 30-minute break in the afternoon for lunch, and he would talk to the kitchen cabinets, and he would talk to the refrigerator. He would call them filled with groceries because in the natural, they weren't full. They were empty, mm-hmm. and there were more people living there than just the two of us now. So now there's four of us living there, and I, I, I saw so many times that uh, God would send people to us with groceries, and we never made our needs known to anybody. Uh, we didn't go around moping and complaining and, oh, woe is me. As a matter of fact, um, we had a brand new home, brand new furniture. Uh, everything that we had was almost new. We had recently acquired before we went in the ministry. So so if you were looking by the natural, you would see that we didn't have a need. But if you could hear from the Spirit of God, you would know that we needed groceries and there are things that we needed in our life because we didn't have the same income any longer, and there were certain things we paced ourselves with, like air conditioning, uh, turning it on in the summer. We didn't turn it on. We opened the doors and the windows, and we sat outside at night and listened to teaching tapes at that time. And uh, But I can remember the time. Uh, one, I remember one time in particular this lady came to the door, and and um, she could see through our screen door, and you could tell she was a little uh, confused. I could see it on her face, or a little puzzled. And uh, she could see into our house and see that it was everything was new and uh, nice, and and you could tell she was she was questioning something. And so I, asked, I said, "Can I help you?" And she said, "Well," and I knew her from church, but I didn't know her well. But I, we went went to the same church and. She said, well, I was at the grocery store, and the Lord spoke to me to get a, to get two roasts and five chickens and 10 pounds of hamburger meat for you. Wow. And you could tell she was kind of leaned in the door and looked, and she's, you could almost hear her say, but you, you don't need that, do you? Mm-hmm. And I just looked at her, and I said, please, come in. Where have you been? And she looked at me real funny, and I said, my husband believes God every day. We believe God every day for groceries. And... You only the Spirit of God could tell you we had that need Mm -hmm. because you would not know that by looking in the natural that we had any kind of a need because we didn't let it be known, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, she was she was real excited because she knew she heard from God. It was a double win for both of us. She could she could hear from God, be obedient. I'm sure she got totally blessed from that. I know we did. We got to eat, and so (laughs) that was a wonderful thing. But so many times, you know, that would happen. Uh, we learned to, we learned a lot about seed time and harvest. We learned a lot about sowing and reaping and, and giving into the kingdom. That became paramount to us. Mm-hmm. Hearing God's voice 
and being be obedient to be used by him. And that takes faith. Yeah. Those things were truly monumental in our lives. So you said something earlier. You quoted the verse from Jeremiah that God's word will not return void, but it will accomplish um, the thing to which he sent it. And you said that you were sending the word out, that you and Pastor Don were sending the word out. Talk more about that, about how you send the word out of your life. You stand on the word, but you send it out also. Because I said, it's believing, speaking, and doing. Mm-hmm. So we work, we would, every month, I got paid as a school teacher once a month. And at that time, unless he unless he used an extra job or two that he did transporting cars, uh, that was the money we tithed on. And we would come in every Saturday night prior to the Sunday morning we would be going to church. We would get on our knees, open our Bible, and we would confess the scriptures of bring, bringing the tithe into the storehouse, that there would be meat in my house, and, that, and proving God in that return that he would open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing on us. And we begin, and that he would rebuke the devourer for our sake. And we would do that on our knees with our check on the Bible as we prayed. We were believing God. And then that check made it to the offering plate the next day. And then we would give offerings. Besides the tithe, we would give offerings. So we were doing what we knew to do. We were bringing our tithe into the house of God. We were also sowing seeds of offerings. We were doing that at a time when most people would hold on to what they had because our income had been cut by Don's not working but studying for the ministry. And the natural thing to do would be to hold on to it, not let go of it. Mm-hmm. But we knew the Word of God and what it said, and so we would remind God that we knew what we were doing would there was not in vain, but it would prosper because of what we were doing and why we were doing it. We understood living by faith financially would mean you sow expecting a harvest, and we did. Um, God was so faithful, always is faithful to us. During those times, it was just um, honestly exciting to see what he would do and how fast he would do it and when he would do it and who he would use. You know, he never used people that you would expect he would use. It was always someone that was, and that's why you knew it was supernatural, because the people that he would use to bless our lives were not people that you even thought had, they needed blessing. And you know what? They did. But they, they too knew, we're going to sow seed because God's going to bless us. I remember one time Don was wanting to buy me something for Christmas. And I got home one day after school, and he said, he had, I think it was five envelopes. And he, uh, we had had, I think we had $250 left in our account. And the Lord spoke to her and said, empty your checking account and give to these five ministries. So he wrote everything out. He said, you want to go with me to the post office to, to send this? Because uh, I'm sowing seed for a purpose. He didn't tell me at that time what it was. But I found out later it was for me. And uh, I can remember putting my hand on the doorknob of the front door so we, we were walking outside and the doorbell rang. And I opened the door, and there was a woman standing there, a woman that didn't have a lot. And she said, the Lord told me to give this to you, and she handed us a card. And I said, do you want me to open it? She said, you can open it when I leave. So okay. So she left, and we opened it up. Now, he had just had in his hand, with stamps on the envelope, $250. And he was believing God. He was actually believing God for, I believe, a, a, almost a $500 uh, amount is what he was believing for. And when we opened the card that the woman had given us, it had $750 in it. Hmm. And it was the $500 he believed for plus a tithe plus offering that he had given away. Wow. 
Isn't that awesome? That is. That's amazing. And so, I mean, we're like, whoa, that's fast. So, you know, some people would ask us, so you think that's the return of what you just gave? It's the ret- We had given so much. Who knows where it came from? It, the crop came from the seeds that were sown, you know. And But there were times after time that those things would happen. And they started out small, and they got bigger and bigger and bigger in our lives. So we knew that, you know, if every hair on your head is numbered, and it is, and God knows the number, how much more does he know about your individual lives of every single thing that you need? Mm-hmm. And it takes faith to believe that. Yes. And he did, and he, he came through every time for things like that. It was such a blessing, you know. He, but you have to be obedient to sow. Mm-hmm. And there is always going to be a reaping for. I remember the first time he told us to give a car away. He, and he speaks to us, uh, obviously, individually. And then we come together and say, look, God been speaking to you. Yes, what? And then we share. And sure, he's speaking to both of us the same thing. That's how we know it's him. And so he had spoken to, to us, and we came together and said, has God been dealing with you about giving our car away? He said, yes, you know. And to who? And I told him the family. He said, that's right. That's why he's been telling me. So we went out and we detailed the car. You know, when God tells you to do something, to give something, always give like you would want to receive. You know, That's gift wrapping point. looks better than than a paper sack. Mm-hmm. So we went, we, we detailed the car, we cleaned it inside and out, filled it with gas, got it all ready, drove over to the house and uh, presented the keys to this family. Then we asked him to drive us home because we didn't have a way home. <laughs> but, you know, God was so faithful. It, it wasn't. Uh, it seemed like a while, but when you look back on it, it was several years later that we paid cash for a car. Mm-hmm. You know, God gave us that money to be able to do that. Yeah. And he even gave a special deal for it. Um, uh, there was a dealership out of town that was selling cars below list. It was kind of real unusual. So we found the car over here, got all the details of it, ordered it over the phone to the people out of town, this dealership, went and picked up the car. Not long after we picked up the car, the whole thing closed down. But we got a great deal out of it. Mm-hmm. And we were able to pay cash for it, and we were excited about it. But living by faith is um, you have to say what God says, you believe what he says, and you do what it is that you believe he says to you. It's awesome. So were there ever times in those years whenever you're speaking to the empty refrigerator and speaking to the empty cabinets and g- emptying your checking, checking account and giving your car away, are there ever moments, were there ever moments where your feelings or your emotions tried to pop up on you oh, and sure. fly in the face of your faith. Can you talk sure. about that just a little bit? Sure. One one comes to mind in particular, I can remember. Now, keep in mind, during this time, and we knew this is a season in our life. This is sowing season. Mm-hmm. So you had a vision on the future. You bet. And I can remember um, I stayed out of the malls, and I didn't go shopping. Because you're going to, you know, it'd be like saying to an alcoholic, you want to go to a bar, you can have water, we're going to do this. You know That's I mean? such you know, a good point. Yeah, you know, I, I stayed away from temptation. You That's didn't put, how you'd you didn't say put it. it in front of your eyes. Yeah, and, and it was like, I'm not going to do that. But I can remember several times that I, before I made that decision that my mom and I used to go shop on Saturday. It was just kind of the thing to do. You went shopping and or looking more than anything else. But sometimes you'd buy or whatever and... And I can remember going, this isn't working for me because I would leave. Uh, I didn't buy anything, but I'd come home wishing I had, mm-hmm. you know, wishing I had. So I thought, Lord, I, I'm going to limit this. I'm going to limit this because it makes me feel bad. And there's no need to feel bad because I know this is just a time and a season. And this season will pass. And it wasn't long after that, I went back with my mom to a store, and I thought, okay, Lord, I'm going to take a different approach when I go to places. 
that I have your favor. And uh, if there's something that absolutely is necessary that I get, need, that you'll make a way for that and the rest of it, you'll just take that desire away from me. I had one pair of shoes that I taught school in. They kind of matched everything that I had. I'm sure everybody got tired of looking at them. I loved them because I didn't, I, you know, they went with everything. And I, I love shoes. And prior to that time, I buy shoes all the time, but not then. I broke the sh one of the shoes, so I couldn't wear them, and I was kind of disappointed. And my, my mom and I were shopping, and I remember going to the store, at, uh, and there were those shoes. And I just looked at them, and I thought, wow, I ought to buy them again because they go with everything. I just have to have one pair of shoes. Mm -hmm. But I wasn't going to because I knew I couldn't afford anything. And I'll never forget this salesperson came up to me and said, do you like those shoes? I thought, do I like them? I've been wearing them for like two years, just nonstop every day until I wore them out. And I said, oh, yeah. And I said, well, you know what? I don't know why I'm doing this, but if you want those shoes, I'll sell them to you half price. And, I th I, and in my heart, I just said, thank you, Lord, because mm -hmm. you did that for me. So it was, it was fun to know that if he opened a door, I could go through it and in if a door of favor didn't open there, then I didn't need it. Mm -hmm. and it was a it was a good thing. It was a good thing. But boy, there were times to be tempted, you know, to go. For instance, when um, Don and I'd leave church, and it was a church we were just attending, several people might come up and say, "Hey, we're all going to go to Denny's. Do you want to go? You want to meet us there?" or we're going to go to some restaurant, and we'd say, we can't, we have plans, and we did. We had plans of going home and eating a sandwich and not paying money for lunch <laughs> or dinner. Mm -hmm. But if they said, we want to take you guys out to lunch, we'd love to. Mm -hmm. Because there was no point that we knew we weren't going to, we couldn't waste money going out. We were, we, you know, when you have faith, you're believing God. We were believing God for Don to be able to study, for me to teach school, for our money to stretch, to be able to stay in our home and just trust God during this time that he would provide. He called us into the ministry. He'll take care of us. Mm -hmm. But there are natural things that you have to do to go with. You can't be foolish. Now, you can't say, okay, we're going to take a two-week vacation this year and go to Disneyland. Really? On what money? Mm -hmm. The money that you need to pay the electric bill with. So we knew we couldn't we couldn't take an unnecessary trip. We knew we couldn't just randomly go out to eat. And, and we again we got to the point where we knew we couldn't turn the air conditioner on too because it would drive up the electric bill. So put your shorts on and go sit out in the backyard. I mean, you know, you just you do what you do the things that cooperate with your faith. And we knew that God would provide for us, but we weren't going to be foolish, foolish mm -hmm. to do things that would negate our faith and thwart what we were believing God for. So we were very careful about that. And that goes back to what you were talking about with the actions, the believe, speaking, and doing. And you're doing. going to do what lines up with what yes. you're believing for and yes. what you're speaking for. Yes. Okay, so... How can we start to live by faith if we aren't living by faith right now? Or why don't we start off with something else? Why do you think that some Christians don't live by faith? I don't think they know what it is. Okay. I think they see faith as a, a belief system, mm -hmm. that you might have it for some things and not for another, but it's so much more than that. They look at it as something that doesn't encompass their whole life. Their whole life, right. Mm -hmm. They compartmentalize it. Okay. They do. If, if they even think about it, mm -hmm. they do. They may think of it as a denomination because, you know, what faith are you? Mm -hmm. So they may think of it that way. Um, but actually to believe God, it, I think it goes back to, they'd say to believe God, I would have to acknowledge that there is a God. And even more than that, I would have to acknowledge he cares about me. Hmm. That he's made a provision for me to touch him and his word with faith. Mm -hmm. 
And a lot of people don't see God that way. Yeah. They again, they see faith as what you believe as a religion or something they can't really wrap their mind around. They don't grasp. And, and that kind of plays on Galatians 5, 6 when it says, you know, like circumcision and uncircumcision, they don't really mean anything, but it's faith working through love. And so if you don't believe that God loves you, you're going to live a carnal lifestyle. Yeah. Really, is what it, not to be condemning. Or you just don't think he cares. Mm-hmm. You think I mean, he's God, distant. My would, God's supposed to care for me. Mm-hmm. And, you know, they would, they would wonder that. Yeah. But when you really put your faith in God, you're saying, I trust you. And most people can't trust what they don't see. Mm-hmm. And since they can't see God in form, they can see him in function, mm-hmm. they can't see him in form, then it's hard to put their trust in something or someone they cannot see. Mm-hmm. You know, we're flesh creatures. We, you know, it has to apply to our senses. And it, when it doesn't, it throws you off. Mm-hmm. To, yeah, to say something like, Jesus is your salary, you know, it does. It flies in the face of the world system that we're all raised in. Before we get saved, you're steeped in the culture. And so you aren't going to think, to believe in a God or to believe God for your needs or believe God for your your wants. And then, you know, to say that Jesus is your peace, you know, to use faith to for peace to manifest in your life would be totally opposite of the way that we're raised in it. But when you believe that God loves you, exactly, exactly what you said, you know, you're saying, I trust you to be not just something in my life, but to be everything in my life. Right. Most people, and most people don't think God cares about mm-hmm. them. That He even knows they exist. That's a sad statement. Because they don't see mm-hmm. Him as a father. They see Him maybe as a creator, but not a father. So He's like an inventor rather than something personal to them. But once they ever get a taste of being personal with their Heavenly Father... They'd never go back to the other. Mm-hmm. So good. So how do we begin to live by faith? For the people that aren't, or for the people that maybe feel or think think that they aren't, how do we begin to live by faith? Well, the Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing. It's continuous action. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. The more they immerse themselves in God's Word in the Bible... <laughs> the more real he'll become. Mm -hmm. They'll start seeing him for who he is. They'll start seeing him as that loving Heavenly Father. They'll see his hand on every page of history. They'll see his hand at work. They'll they'll look back at their own life and know God must have had his hand on my life all this time and I didn't even know it. Mm -hmm. That he's just, and he's just waiting for them. Like the... The father of the prodigal son, he is waiting with arms wide open to receive them. Once they get that image, I, I just don't believe they just could go back because they, everybody is looking for the father to love them. Mm-hmm. It's, you know, they may call it that there's a hole missing in them. There's a, a void in their life. They're, but it's God. Yeah. They're look that relation you were made. He is your father. You is, you are his child, and you don't even. And most people don't even know it. They're orphans and don't even know it. They're looking for that father. Yeah, it's like Pastor Don says um, all the time. You know, faith begins where God's will is known and understood. Yeah. And so the key is just knowing, beginning knowing. to know. And the Word of God, that Word brings that knowledge to you. You know, the Bible says my, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Mm-hmm. Not people who don't know me. That's obvious. But even says my own people. So you've got to open the Word to see. And today the Word of God is not popular. Mm-hmm. It's not part of the culture. It's not... Um, it may even appear to be archaic to most millennials that it, it doesn't apply today. That was then, this is now. Mm-hmm. And yet, it will apply through eternity. 
his word is forever established, mm-hmm. forever established. Yeah. And you have to, um, I think that's part of faith. You have to have faith in the word of God. And we know when we, from reading the Bible that in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Jesus is the Word, manifest in a person. So you, you have, when you have faith in Jesus, you are having faith in His Word, what He said. Because mm-hmm. He left us His Word and His Spirit to lead and guide and direct our lives. But the word doesn't really, like it, most people think that it doesn't apply. And then they never get to like Colossians 3.16, you know, where it says, let the word of Christ richly dwell within you, when really the word of Christ is only sort of dwelling within you. So you never get to the point where you're really living by faith until you, exactly what you've said over and over, open the word, hear the word, real understand what it says, what it means, actually apply it to your life. Find, finding yourself in it. You know, right. Colossians, what, 2.10, when he says, you know, you are complete in Christ. You're found in yeah, him. It's not a coffee table book. Mm-hmm. It, it, it's not a book that um, has some of your relatives' names written in. It's just so much more powerful than that. Mm-hmm. It, you know, it's sharper than any two-edged sword, the Bible says. It's, it's so powerful, but it's so simple. And that's what... That's what the word says, that wise people will stumble over the gospel because it's so simple. Mm -hmm. It's the written word of God. I love that that is the beginning of living by faith, is just knowing God, knowing God. That's the beginning of trusting God, that God doesn't make it difficult. The father doesn't make it difficult. Even the father in the story of the prodigal son, it wasn't difficult. All he had to do was come home. All he had to do was approach him. And then that leads right into what it says in Hebrews, you know, we should approach the throne of grace with confidence, you know, expecting to find help and mercy in the time of need. That's really good. Thank you for that. Now, you've already told us a couple stories of living by faith, but can you give us one more for the end of this interview? You have another story about living by faith from anywhere in your life, anywhere in the ministry. Sure. Mm -hmm. When uh, we first started the church, um, of course, we start. We didn't have any money to advertise that we we had prepared for almost two years, gotten all the legal work, the church name, everything ready, and we were just waiting for the Lord to say when. And He said, "When, December the twentieth, have the church opening December twentieth." Which I thought was so unusual because people's minds are Christmas shopping and all these things, and I thought, okay. And we we had a hard time finding a place. Odessa was going through a boom at that time again. There were very few places. She, of course, we couldn't buy anything in that short notice. She wouldn't want to because we didn't know who's coming, how many are coming originally. And, and uh, we the, there was a meeting room in the United Way building, and they let us rent it for, I think, $50 a month. And... We didn't have the fifty dollars up front, but the rent wasn't due till the end of the month. So we figured if we were called, we could at least raise fifty dollars by the end of the month. <laughs> and we couldn't put an ad in the paper because we didn't have any money to do that. But there were the religious section of the Odessa American would put in little announcements free. So we put in a free announcement in there that the church was starting, and it came out on Saturday morning, and then Sunday morning would be our first church service. So Don and I went down Saturday night, and uh, we opened the back door of the of the building to walk in, and when we did, the carpet was moving. And we couldn't understand why the carpet was moving until we turned the lights on, and, we were, and then roaches were just everywhere. It was like, oh, my gosh. And we moved all the chairs and set everything up, moved the tables around, and but we were so excited. We... We just pretended we didn't see the roaches and got everything ready, and we couldn't sleep all night. But there was a vision that was set before us. We had been successful in business, and that was just so easy. And when the Lord spoke to our hearts about pastoring the church, he said, you go pastor a church of 5,000 people. That's a lot of people. Mm -hmm. 
but in, in our hearts, it was like, okay, that sounds great. Like doable by tomorrow, you know, and 22 people showed up that first Sunday. I can't tell you if I've ever been more excited in my entire life as we were that day. It, it was euphoric. We didn't sleep the night before. Uh, 22 people came that day, and it was on. Mm -hmm. I mean, we were, you could just see the vision set before us. We knew the beginning, and we know the ending. And it was the in-between we had no clue about. <laughs> and we learned, we had, honestly, you had to grow in faith for the in-between. Mm -hmm. It has been a phenomenal 35 years. And you see God's hand in everything, from in, in everything. Um, it's exciting. Uh, there's just still so much more to go. Mm -hmm. uh, but we're closer now to the end. But we have the same feeling. We were just that close the very first day. Mm -hmm. It was because you knew where you were going. And he, he the Bible says he'll show you the end from the beginning. And it's like the carrot on the end of the stick, so to speak. And it's always kept us moving because he showed us the end from the beginning. That takes faith. Mm -hmm. Because in when in times where uh, they were not so good, you know, there's good, bad, ugly times. And sometimes in the bad and ugly times, you have to look for that carrot on the end of the stick because he said this is where you will be. And you have to just kind of plow through. Mm -hmm. You have the, to hold on to that. To where you are yeah. to get to where you're going to be. Mm -hmm. And that's, did you all... I know you, and y'all talk about this all the time, but like how often would you say that you put God in remembrance of his word during oh. this process? Like, God, you said. We, that's what you have to do. Mm -hmm. Just like Jesus, what did Jesus do when he was tempted? What did Jesus do when he was in trouble and in danger? He said, it is written. Mm -hmm. So what what was written on our hearts is what God told us. And so we would have to say, all right, we'd tell it to the devil. I mean, God already knows what he said. Yeah. We're going to tell it to the devil. My God said he would supply all our needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. My God said we would be a church of 5,000 people. Mm -hmm. My God said by his stripes we were healed. And we would put him in remembrance not only the Heavenly Father of His Word, but we would tell our circumstances, our mountains, the enemy to our faith, this is what is written. That's really good. It's how you do warfare. That's really good. It's what's written. Mm -hmm. You have to say it. You have to say it. You have to say it. Well, Pastor Paulette, that is all the time that we have. Sadly, thank you so much for all of the wisdom, all of the stories uh, I think it's great to hear personal stories from you and from Pastor Don because it gives people something, uh, not that the word isn't tangible, but more tangible to hold on to. It's, you know, you see somebody else go through something or hear about how somebody else went through something, and then you're able to say, well, God, you know, if you did it for them, I know that you'll do it for me. It brings hope to you, mm -hmm. yes. So thank you so much for your time. And to everybody out there listening, thank you so much for being with us today. Interact with us on social media. We're going to post the link to this episode on our Facebook page. Comment in the comment section. Ask questions. You can email us with questions. We would love to hear what you have to say. Remember to go to the podcast store and subscribe to the Odessa Christian Faith Center podcast. Rate us. Share this with your friends so we can get this awesome word out to as many people as possible. And we'll see you next week for a brand new episode. You've been listening to the OCFC podcast. You can find more information about Odessa Christian Faith Center at ocfc.org. Be sure to find us on Facebook and Twitter. Email us your questions or thoughts about this podcast at ocfc at ocfc.org. Thank you for listening and be sure to subscribe and share this podcast with your friends.